Hello, Lily. You're not going to... Of course. You know that my... Dr. Marcel would surely be pleased. With the help of his credit card, Lily made some confetti. Lily had never seen such an unhappy man in a bee costume before, but she also hadn't really traveled much. Hello, stranger. Before you say anything, please take a deep breath. And is that what freedom smells like? Or is it just regular air consisting of oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, soot from the asylum's new chimney, and a touch of diesel oil from the garage? Ah. <sighs> I don't want to seem melodramatic, but I'm somewhat skeptical about this so-called freedom. Ever since Dr. Marcel started neglecting his duties as head of this asylum, it's us, the patients, that carry the burden of creating our own boundaries. And before I'm able to measure up to this freedom, I do have to ask myself a few things. Maybe there are such things as good boundaries. And even in an ideal case, can I really decide where my own freedom starts and stops? It so happens that no one is preventing me from leaving the asylum. Does that mean I'm free? Can I just fly away, spread my wings and leap from the asylum roof? The urge is there. Just like any bee, I long to buzz across fields of flowers collecting honey. But I'm still fighting it. Something about this freedom stinks. I'm skeptical. Although I have- You're not going to play- Of course! You know that- Mmm, <laughs> that smells good. But even if the illusion is almost perfect, it's only artificial flavors and chemical esters. An almost perfect illusion, but not real. Like with everything here in the asylum, it's only a half-hearted attempt to trick us into thinking that we're free. And now that no one is stopping us from leaving the asylum, it provides us with a welcome excuse to refuse to leave. Right you are, stranger. I'm just running away from my responsibilities. The responsibility to myself, to accept the deal that the world out there has offered me. I thank you. I've made up my mind. I can't just sit around here doing nothing anymore. I should buzz across fields of flowers and collect honey. Toodaloo, asylum. Hey ho, freedom. Whee! Lily was glad that she had helped the bee man. Soon he would be in a better place. Wherever the man in the bee costume was now, he apparently didn't need a scarf. Moths fluttered around the dim light of the lamp. They were apparently searching for food. The moth seemed interested, but Lily hesitated. Something told her that a moth-riddled item was worth less than one that wasn't. The moth seemed interested, but Lily something told her that a moth-riddled item was worth less than one that wasn't.
The moth seemed in something to... The moth seemed interested something to... Lily had often wished to go to the zoo to feed the animals. It was even more beautiful than she had imagined. Lily knew that you could use starch to stiffen up laundry. It wouldn't hurt to give it a shot. Well, who said it? Now Lily had a stiff towel with holes. Yikes! What are you doing here? Are you actually... dead? Uh -uh. Too bad. I could use a little entertainment, but the doctor told me not to talk to other people. At least not living ones. Sorry. But I'm going to have to ask you to leave. What do you have there? A feather duster? Not that I would want to have a feather duster. Oh, no. No matter how pretty they look. Which doesn't mean that I can't hold it for a second. Just one little second. That would be completely harmless. Don't you think? Give it to me now! Ah, oh, what a relief. And just look. I even found my old spare sheets. Here, go ahead and take it. You... you've earned it. Oh dear, Lily really had managed to ruin the sheet. But perhaps a sheet with two eye holes could be good for something. Yikes! A ghost! How sweet. Finally someone to talk to. You have to help me. Dr. Marcel is wrongfully keeping me here in the asylum. Isn't there anything that you and your ghost buddies can do about it? Curse him? Deprive him of his sleep? Drag him into the seventh circle of hell and torture him for all eternity with red-hot needles? Oh, come on. I've done so much for you. I've performed obscure rituals, sacrificed chickens, danced naked. Although when I think about it, 
I'm not sure if it was really a ghost that asked me to do that. Ugh. I don't feel so well. Could you please take off your head while we're talking? Uh, uh. Oh, man. You're not very talkative. Can't you help me at all? Uh-huh. Great! Look at this! The doctor is forcing me to knit these stuffed rabbits. No idea what he needs them for, but I'm not very good at it. Maybe you could lend me a hand. Wait! I'll push some of the fabric through the hatch. What do you have there? Let me see. Oh, very good. You obviously understand the basic principle. Go ahead and use the red urinal as much as you like. What do you have there? Let me see. Oh. Very good. You obviously understand the basic principle. Go ahead and use the yellow urinal as much as you like. What do you have there? Let me see. Oh, very good. You obviously understand the basic principle. Go ahead and use the green urinal as much as you like. What do you have there? Let me see. Oh, very good. You obviously understand the basic principle. Go ahead and use the blue urinal as much as you like. Yellow bananas. Blue blueberries. Green broccoli. Red tomatoes. Well then. I didn't want any tomatoes. <laughs> oh, great. Here we go again with the crying. Get rid of it. Take it from our sight. Oh, no. Struggle, Jug. Too bad. Starving to death would have been such a relief. Come hither. Do tell us of thy progress. How about that? Red bananas. about that green tomatoes how about that blue broccoli how about that yellow blueberries Red bananas. Yellow blueberries. Blue broccoli.
green tomatoes. The pizza! Well then! Mmm! Superb! Superb! Great! I wish I were as good on the phone as you! Druggle jug! And Peter is satisfied too! Satisfied? How can I be satisfied in such a world in which the only moments worth living for are those when the pizza arrives with the right toppings? That means yes! We owe you one! It's not that bad. I've already lost all hope of dying honorably anyway. Druggle jug! Well said. Now that the food is taken care of, let us begin the game. Don't you want to play too, sweetie? You'll see. It'll be incredibly fun. If you take pleasure in such excessive self-degradation. That and a dice cup. Druggle jug! Uh-huh. So be it. Then follow us. Into the world of Hoth Mottigor. Your group has set up camp near the infamous Goblin Gorge. Lily found herself in a clearing. The campfire was crackling, and the wind whipped through her clothes. You can hear the war drums of the goblins in the distance. This is your last rest. Before the great battle, Lily did in fact hear drums. An enormous army seemed to be waiting for them in the nearby mountains. Wait, are you telling the story or am I? Uh, wh what? It's just that I see that you don't have the Dungeon Master screen in front of you. And I'm pretty sure that the Dungeon Master is recognized by his Dungeon Master's screen. That's ridiculous. I'm the narrator. I don't need a... Well, then why don't you be the Dungeon Master then? I'm curious how you'll do without any battle value tables or source books. What? But, but that's... That's what I thought. And now, move over. Ow! Hey! You can't just... Where was I? Oh, yes. You're here on the orders of the king to drive the goblins from the gorge. There are rumors that the goblins have dammed up the Pink River. This has turned Hothmotagor's most important memorial into a reservoir, the Valley of Unpleasant Memories. Also sitting at the fire is a mysterious local guide. You're tired from the journey. But sleep is far from your mind. Goblin scouts could be lurking anywhere. The black magician Petrula, the noble Sir Drogalot, and the amusing juggler Snippo. I want a different role. Shush! Are gathering their strength for the battle. Only the Amazonian barbarian warrioress Lilligrim. Huh? Only the Amazonian barbarian warrior Lilligrim is restless. It's your move, Lilligrim. What will you do? Roll for charisma, Peter. Do I have to? <sighs> that was to be expected. Snippo is just about the ugliest dope you've ever seen. <sighs> Hello, Lilligrim. Would you like to be amused by my funny pranks? Then watch me. And are you amused? I didn't think I'd ever say such a thing, but I'd wish we'd go into battle instead of just hanging around here. I'd much prefer a quick, bloody death to this endless humiliation. Cool. I'm not afraid of the goblins. If that's what you mean. I'm not worried about being cut into little pieces by mighty goblin swords. And I'm not bothered by the rumors that they wrap the intestines of their victims around thorny spears. For I am Snippo, the funny prankster of the group. 
Um... Yes. It doesn't just look like it. I am actually juggling only one ball. And I know how ridiculous that must seem. My character sheet said that I... <clears throat> I, the comical snipple, have the marvelous ability to juggle 55 balls at once. But as much as I would have liked to imagine what such a thing would look like, the mysterious traveler thought I should just juggle one ball instead, because it's much more contemplative. And as long as my shame or boredom doesn't cause me to spontaneously combust, then I'll stick to that. If you have a better suggestion... <laughs> I understand. You want to see the trick with the 55 balls? I have to disappoint you. The Traveler thinks it's too hectic. And apparently this game is about fulfilling the obscure wishes of randomly appearing cowl wearers. <sighs> At least this game is sticking to the book. Hmm, maybe I'd feel a little less stupid if I try it with three balls for a while. <clears throat> On the other hand, I'm a clown called Snippo, and I have a penchant for ridiculous hats. It's probably part of the role that I feel like a moron. Uh-uh. Yeah, that fits the picture. Apparently, I'm cursed with having to make a fool out of myself for all eternity. It's just like reality. Only with the matching clothes. No. You think I should try it without any balls? Bravo. You found the only way to increase my boredom even more. On the other hand, if I juggle without a ball, I might be able to take a quick nap. No one seems to object to sleeping around here. Sir Drugalot looked splendid in his shiny armor. Druggle jug. Mithril armor? Really? Druggle jug. Okay, then. In his mithril armor. Um... Hello, Lilygrim. You're still up? You should get some rest. I'll keep guard and make sure the fire doesn't go out. <laughs> Don't look so grim. Your thirst for action is honorable, but the mysterious traveler is right. Strength lies in tranquility. Lilligrim felt like screaming at the brave Sir Drogalot. She hadn't traveled all the way to Goblin Gorge just to sleep. But something kept her from losing her temper. Fuming, she turned away from her companion. Her eyes fell on the quiet traveler who had listened to the entire conversation. Was that a smile she saw beneath the hood? I know what you want to say. You're here to fight. Not to sleep, right? Maybe tonight we should. Remain calm and gather our strength. That's what you wanted to say, right? <sighs> the Traveler is right. Acting in haste is never a good idea. <gasps> Don't worry. I'm sure the goblins won't attack us tonight. They're guarding their reservoir dam in the gorge. But I do wonder what their plans are. Damming up the Pink River and flooding the Valley of Unpleasant Memories. Why? It's all very mysterious. Um... Are you worried about the fire? Hmm. Usually, I'd agree with you. Those few logs are certainly not enough to keep the fire burning through the night. Plus, the best things always happen to you when you go into the forest looking for firewood. You find treasure maps, fall into enchanted wells, or meet merchants with magical amulets. Maybe I should... Relax a little and call it a day. That's what you wanted to say, right? Hmm. The Traveler is right. There doesn't always have to be an adventure, and the night is pretty warm. I'll wait up to put the last log on the fire. Then I'll turn in, too. <clears throat> Are you as tired as I am? 